G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another playlist and we're looking at WPF for beginners. And to break that down, essentially we are making Windows programs. That's what it is. Now in this playlist, I wanna focus on two different things. I'm gonna have videos very similar to the console programs focusing on individual controls and skills as I go throughout. And then we're gonna have a look at making whole projects to focus on those skills and expand on them a little bit more. The first project we're gonna be making is a calculator, nice and simple and focusing on those skills that I'm gonna introduce in the first couple of videos. Now, before I get started with anything, there is a very cool announcement. Microsoft have finally released Visual Studio 2017 in its full entirety. I guess is the best way to say it. And it coincides with this playlist quite nicely because it was only a couple of days ago that this occurred. So I'm gonna suggest go and update your version of Visual Studio 2017 to the full version. I haven't done that yet. I will be very, very soon, okay? Or at the very least, download Visual Studio 2017 if you don't already have it. Now, this is a WPF program that I have developed for my year 11 students. They have to reproduce this program in its entirety. And it uses a number of different controls. Every object that you can interact with is called a control. So we have on the side a list box that when I click on, it changes the color of the form. I like orange. Over here, we have check boxes that I can tick off. And when I press OK, it tells me which ones I've ticked. And then we've got option buttons, also known as radio buttons, that you can click on one at a time and interact with like that. So this here is a WPF application. Some people just call it a Windows application. Sometimes it's just called a form. But the actual umbrella term for all these is called a GUI program. So that stands for Graphical User Interface, G-U-I, but it's pronounced GUI. All right, now the way these guys differ to console programs that I've been using throughout the entire basics playlist is that I can interact with multiple things at once. Okay, I can choose the order in which I interact with things. I don't have to interact with this first. I can interact with the checkboxes first or something different again. And I can choose radio buttons and click on the buttons. I don't even have to click on the buttons after I interact with the radio buttons. So the biggest difference between a GUI program and a console program is that users have complete control over the execution of your program and what gets interacted with, okay? That is the thing. The programmers no longer have the power. It is now the user that has the power. And a lot of programmers find that hard to deal with. But I like it, to be completely honest with you. Now, I keep talking about this acronym of WPF. So I'm going to just go up to make a new project before I go too quickly. And this is it right here, WPF app. Now, WPF, as you can see over here, stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. Now, that's a very complicated term to just basically mean that Microsoft have created a library of designing user interfaces that works across computers, tablets, mobile phones, and hell, even TVs, if you wanna get your app on an Xbox One. Now, you can't take a WPF and put it on a Windows phone. I'm just gonna say that outright. You then, you need to create a universal app if you wanna be able to do that. But a WPF's language for designing the interface will be the same as if you are doing a mobile app, and that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna quickly change this to my YouTube folder. I am going to make a brand new application and I probably suggest that you do the same thing. We're gonna make a Hello World program, okay? So let's call it Hello World. Hopefully I haven't already got a project in there. I might call it underscore WPF and I accidentally untick that. And it's going to hopefully close my task 2.2 and create a new one. Now the first thing you'll notice is the interface is a lot busier than when you're using a console program. So a console program, you had less files down the side here, you had less tabs over the top here, and you had less stuff on the screen. So that's obviously why I start with a console program, because it's basic, it's really simple to get across programming, and now we've got an interface to deal with as well. So it's good to have the basics down pat. So what you need to make sure you have, first of all, have your solution explorer, because if you ever accidentally close any of these tabs, you reopen them through the Solution Explorer. Make sure you have your Properties tab as well because any control that we deal with or any color we want to change is going to be through the Properties. And then also make sure you've got a toolbox on the side because you're going to need that indefinitely. If you're missing any of those things, have a look under the View, okay? And you'll find most of them, well, all of these ones in there. So what I'm going to do to 
to make our first hello world program, I'm just gonna chuck a button on there and we're gonna have a message box that pops up and says hello world. So that's the very basics of a WPF program. So all you need to do to put a control is you can double click on this item here or you could just single click and then draw it if you want to. All right, and then as you can see, now I've got the button selected. I've got all these properties which apply to my button. Now, if you're ever going to add code to a control, I'm gonna say this right now and probably emphasize it lots and lots of times. If you're ever going to use a control in programming, such as this button here, I wanna add code to the button, name the thing first. And there's a bit of a naming convention when it comes to these things that I like to use. The first three letters of a control's name is what the control is. So because this guy is a button, I'm gonna use BTN as the first three letters that I make. So the reason I do that is because when we're programming, we might have lots of controls we're using, we might have lots of variables that we're using. You just wanna make sure that you can distinguish between variables and the different controls on your form. So I'm gonna call this guy button with a capital H, button hello. Plain and simple. Second thing I'm gonna do is change what the button says. And you find that under the content property here. So let's just say, press me. Simple as that. Okay, so this is how you work with a GUI program. You drop controls from your toolbox onto here and you change the properties to give it names and change the way it looks and actually can change the way it behaves a little bit. But right now, let's add some code to this button. So I like to go through the lightning bolt. So if you click on the lightning bolt, these are all the places that we can add code. I wanna add one under click. So I'm gonna double click in this box right here. That's going to generate me a function that I can add code to. So right now you can see that this function is called button hello. That's why I named it because it gives it a good name. Underscore click means that I'm handling the click of the button. However, if I scroll across, okay, no, it's not here. Never mind. Let's just add some code to our button. So what I want to do is just show a message box. So the way we do that is we go message box dot show and in brackets, it's a little bit like right line. You just put quotes put what you want to be in the message box with a semicolon on the end. Now I'm just going to quickly emphasize before I press play, there is no more write lines, read lines, read keys, console backgrounds and foregrounds. They don't exist anymore because we're not a console program. Because we're working with WPF programs, everything has changed to do with that. However, variables, if statements, loops, functions, all that stays. All those basic concepts that we talked about are still in the programs. Now you'll notice that I'm currently in my .cs file, so my source code file. If I wanted to go back to the form, I can simply click on the XAML button up here. That's how you pronounce that XAML, XAML. And we're back to designing the interface. And if I wanna to go to properties, you click on the spatter, okay? Now, there's another way to get between these two tabs here. If, they've, if you ever accidentally closed the source code, yeah, I'll save the change, that's fine. All you need to do is expand this guy and double click on the source code here. Or if you want to learn some shortcuts, you can actually click things like F7 or Shift F7 to go between the code and the designer. There's a lot of usings at the top there. If I scroll down, you'll see there's my button click and my message box. Let's press hello, oh sorry, press start. And then press the button and it says hello world. Now the great thing is because I can click on this button multiple times, the code will fire off every single time I click on the button, okay? Even if I press the enter key because the button's actually highlighted at the moment or the space bar. All right, and that is the basics of doing a WPF program, okay? It's pretty straightforward, okay? Just have a play around, but in the next video, I wanna focus on controls and their associated events, okay? So thanks for watching the video, everybody. There's liking, subscribing, and commenting down the bottom where you know they are. But I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.